What's up, YouTube? Guess what? My tenant destroyed my rental property. It's every landlord's worst nightmare, and I'm gonna walk you through what happened, why it happened, what I learned, and why it's never gonna happen again. So fasten your seatbelts, let's go for a ride. As a disclaimer, I'm not gonna share any personal details about this tenant. Uh, I just wanna share facts about the situation and what happened and why it was a tremendous learning experience for me, uh, someone who is early in their real estate career. It's an experience that I'm so glad that I had now uh, versus 10 years down the line with a more valuable property or a way worse situation. So hopefully you can learn from me and ensure that you're doing everything in a smart way. So right off the bat, uh, reflecting on the situation, it's been about three months now. Um, the person's lease ended in, uh, let's say October 1st of uh, 2021. So I've had about three months to reflect on, on the situation. And uh, I wanted to go over some things I did right and some things uh, I botched uh, and, then, and that uh, you know needed, needed to have been done in a better way. Uh, some things I did right. Um, I use Zillow to list the property and Zillow has a great feature. It costs $10 a week uh, or 40 a month, which is not too bad, um, where you can list the property and then accept applications. That application is great because it pulls the tenant's credit score. It allows you to look at their debt to income ratio, uh, their income, their employment, um, and then a number of other kind of minor factors that would go into helping you make a decision on if this person is a good tenant or not. Another thing that I did correctly was I verified employment. I called the recruiter. Uh, this person had just gotten a new job. I called the recruiter to verify their employment. That person um, was legitimate. I looked them up on LinkedIn. Uh, I verified their level of income as well um, to make sure that they could afford the rent you know, from a, from a, make sure that from a financial standpoint, it made sense. Now, some things I did incorrectly. I never met this person in person. Uh, I did a FaceTime tour. Um, and, uh, you know, there's something to be said about the traditional handshake. Um, you know, do you get a good vibe from this person? And, um, you know, I'll be honest, I, uh, I didn't get a great vibe from, from them on, on the uh, FaceTime call. They said some things that were, um, you know, a little strange, and uh, but you know, I was I was kind of desperate uh, to get a tenant in there, um, and I, you know, as you'll find out, it's kind of a grueling process when you're when you're vetting tenants by yourself, and as soon as you get someone, you you breathe this sigh of relief, and you want to you want to just have them move in and start paying rent, um, you know. So I I did not have the um, you know long term vision here, and uh, I learned my lesson. Um, another thing that I uh, did not do was call references. I did not ask for a, a previous landlord or, or a previous leasing uh, center to call uh, to verify, is this person a good tenant? Do they pay rent on time? Uh, come to find out, they never once paid rent on time in 12 months. So again, uh, my fault entirely. In the second part of this video, I, I wanna walk through um, the destruction and the messiness and the craziness, and I took a ton of photos and videos that I wanted to share with you guys uh, to kind of show you what I was dealing with over the last year. Um, and you know, when I got into real estate, um, I didn't really have any expectations. Obviously, I did it because uh, not only did I, did I really have a passion for real estate, but of course you wanna make money and um, you know, people say, or, or maybe people think that you can get into real estate and just, just uh, you know, enjoy a passive flow of income forever. You know, it's 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 not that that easy. And I, I joke that you know it's passive when I'm not there. You know, meaning that I'm at the property a lot. Uh, you know, at least over the last year, dealing with uh, situations like that. Um, this this tenant broke. Uh, I want to say two dryers and a washer. Um, you know, that's an entire month of rent right there, if not more, um, you know, thousands of dollars worth of damage over the course of the year. And, um, I, I lost a lot of sleep in 2021. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, uh, it's, 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 um, you know, a lot of work and, uh, this property in particular is worth half a million dollars and I, I can't afford to let, uh, a, a single tenant, um, you know, cause damage and, and property value decreases, um, you know, it just can't happen. So this was the front of the property. 
when I finally came after the tenant moved out. And for lack of a better term, it looked like a crack house. There was crap everywhere. It was absolutely filthy. The yard had been destroyed. Uh, and then we'll get into what the interior looked like. But first I wanted to show you how messy the exterior was. And it's a pretty big yard. It's about a 7,000 square foot yard. And there was stuff everywhere. And keep in mind, this person had only lived in this property, thank God, for 12 months. And I really don't know how they accumulated so much stuff and, and created so much mess. It was the equivalent of a human tornado, just stuff absolutely everywhere across the property. So let's get into some of these photos. Again, just stuff everywhere, all over the yard, uh, blocking the carports, uh, bordering all of the fences, the laundry area absolutely trashed, cigarette butts and filth just everywhere. Uh, on the side of the house, just garbage, uh, refuse, uh, debris. And uh, this tenant had not taken any of their personal possessions with them. And beyond that, absolutely everything was filthy, or damaged and needed to be replaced. Um, I guess there was an effort to clean up maybe for two minutes before they uh, stopped. Uh, you know, they left their cable box. Uh, the bathroom was an absolute mess. Uh, nothing out of the fridge was taken and it smelled terrible. Uh, there were fly strips hanging in the kitchen uh, because I guess they were so dirty that the uh, flies were being attracted to the home. Um, you know, just stuff on every wall, like like someone had opened champagne uh, and popped a bottle in every room and let it come uh, pour down the wall. I mean, these were new chairs, brand new patio chairs. How do you even get them that dirty in, in one year? It's kind of ridiculous. Um, so this is a uh, full tour of, of, of the interior of the house. Again, none of the personal possessions uh, were taken. You'll notice there's not a couch or a bed or anything because that was at the front of the property. They had not even taken it with them, although they were nice enough to put it at the curb. Um, and again, just garbage and random debris absolutely everywhere. There's an old refrigerator. Uh, they were not using an air filter. Uh, none of the doors close. The bathroom was disgusting, uh, had not been cleaned in a year, of course. Uh, the mailbox was broken. Uh, I had to spend a ton of time cleaning up. And I think this tenant might have been addicted to garlic salt. More damage here in the bathroom, things peeling off, uh, damage around the drain of the tub. I had to snake that as well to get all the hair and debris out. Uh, the plumbing of the sink had been broken. Uh, they were drilling through doors. Uh, someone explained that one to me. Uh, all of the doors were off of the hinges. Uh, notice I'm wearing gloves because the place was disgusting. The bedroom door to the closet, totally off the track, uh, wedged in there. I had to pry that puppy out. Uh, again, nothing moved out of the closet. Uh, a ton of personal belongings uh, at the front of the property. And uh, what happened to this cabinet? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, off of the hinges, uh, looks like it had been part of Chernobyl. Little bit of comedic relief here, some uh, erotic teaser novels, as well as some male enhancement pills were found uh, at the property, which uh, gave me a little bit of a chuckle. Um, how do you get the underneath of a stove that messy? Uh, more personal belongings. Uh, this person left open motor oil, which was uh, very, very, very nice of them. Uh, chunks of doors missing, uh, burn marks, on the bathroom vanity. Here's a closer look at that uh, destruction to the wall. And again, I'm talking every wall in the property. Broken screens, uh, broken blinds, uh, just everything nicked up. Uh, thank you to Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And then the cherry on top was a 30 foot camper that needed to be towed away that had been left on the property. Uh, very strange. Fast forward a couple weeks, I've gotten the property back to where it should be. I've added some uh, mulch in the front yard. I've cleaned everything up. I redid the interior and it's ready for a new tenant. 
So I wanted to circle back on points uh, three and four, uh, three being what I learned and then four, why it's never going to happen again. Um, so what I learned was the importance of vetting your tenants. And um, the reason that's important, obviously, is, uh, you know, so you don't have PTSD after a terrible experience. And so you can maximize your cash flow. You're not sinking money back into repairs because you have a destructive tenant. Um, and it's just a, it's just a, a symbiotic uh, relationship. I have uh, other tenants and uh, we have a good relationship. Um, and uh, it just makes it a, a lot easier. Uh, it, it, it allows you to, to do what you wanna do as a landlord, uh, maximize uh, the capital that you're bringing in and uh, not have to worry about someone who's, who's in your home, uh, you know, destroying everything. Um, and then why it's never gonna happen again. Uh, this past August, uh, mostly because of this terrible tenant, I hired a property management company and I, I did some research, um, called, a, called around um, the area to find, um, you know, companies that were high re highly reputable. And, um, you know, I made sure that, that I went with a good choice um, and I'll, I'll probably be producing a, a video on, on how to vet a, a property management company uh, some here, some, uh, sometime in the near future here um, so that you guys know the right questions to ask when you're on the phone with, uh, you know, someone on the sales side there or, you know, someone, someone in leadership as you're, as you're trying to make a decision on, uh, you know, allowing them to run your properties for you. So why it's never going to happen again, it's uh, mostly because I have a property management company in place. And uh, they do things like handle, uh, you know, eviction notifications. They have lawyers on staff to, to handle that, that type of communication and develop uh, those legal documents uh, for tenant delivery. Um, and then they handle the payment side of things, the operations. They do tax forms. Uh, and again, very high level overview here. And I want to make another video in the future to, to detail those things. Um, but again, um, <clears throat> what happened? I had a tenant destroy my property. Why it happened? Uh, because I was uh, a solo uh, landlord. I was a one man show. And uh, what I learned how to vet tenants uh, in a better way uh, using a property management company. And that's why it's not going to happen again. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. And, uh, you know, best of luck in, in getting um, respectable tenants in your properties. <laughs>